All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about new media and teams and the writing process. Um, of course, we have Microsoft Word and Google Docs, which are great tools for teens to use to actually type out and edit their work before they publish it on a blog or a fan fiction site or wherever they're publishing it. Um, but new media helps support teens beyond that. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is this site, Teens Writing for Teens. And this is a great site because it not only help, shows teens other example of teens writing, things that have been published, but it also offers things like author insight, um, publishing opportunities, and things of that nature. So it's a great support for teens who want to write. As This is another great support site as well, Go Teen Writers, it's a blog. And this one gets into how to write a novel and a step-by-step -step guide on how to get a book published if the teen is looking to publish beyond a free online site. Um, beyond support as well, there's information about the writing process itself. For example, this website goes through pre-writing to editing and gives teens ideas on what to do for each or what is involved in the step. Of course, we have Alperdue which is an ap academic writing site, but it also has information that teens can use for their own writing, um, such as what to do about writer's block and proofreading. And then there are brainstorming sites. Um, for example, this site, Bubble.us, is a website and an app, and it allows teens to make maps and other brainstorming things for their writing. Um, along with this site and app, there are three other free apps that I found. The first is Graphio Light, then there's Inspiration Maps, and iBrainstorm. Um, these are all very similar, but have a couple different things. Um, iBrainstorm allows more illustrations and those kind of things. Inspiration Map is maps, but it you can add graphics, notes, hyperlinks, audio, all that kind of stuff. And then our last one, Graphio Light very simple, similar to Inspiration Map, but it's a little more streamlined and a little more set in its maps. Um, and that's just a couple different ways that new media helps teens with the writing process. There are many internet opportunities for students to choose from when it comes to online publishing for student writing. That's why we're going to start here with the National Writing Project. They give a pretty extensive list of all of the ways that young writers can submit their work. Um, they're broken down into categories and by age group. And the age group we're focusing on, of course, is middle school and high school. We are going to take a look at Figment. Um, I have a little to say about Kid Pub, but today I want to start with Teen Inc. Teen Inc. is a website that students can share their work and make personal connections with other teenagers. So this, this is work done by teenagers for teenagers, ranges from ages 13 to 19. The site will help aspiring writers um, by building confidence in their skills, whether they choose to submit their work or not. All of the submissions are screened for appropriateness, and the site encourages teen writers to express themselves without disclosing their personal identities, um, which makes it a safe, reliable place to be creative. This is a free place um, that students can access forums and all of the submissions then are critiqued by other teenagers. The next um, one that I wanted to take a look at um, is called Figment. Now Figment is a little different in that, yes, students can still submit their work, but Figment is for writers of all ages and experiences. Um, and the one thing Figment does a little differently than some of the others is that it really relies on social media and getting teenagers or people to connect with each other on social media so that they're pairing up with their peer groups and getting feedback um, from those communities of writers. There are a few privacy concerns for this website because writers are encouraged to make profiles that contain their true identities, um, they may or may not upload pictures that go along with that, so there are some, some issues with that. Although Figment does specify that if you submit your work to them, they have the right to display it, but you're not giving up your ownership of it um, and using Figment. 
there is another website um, called Word Inc., which talks about 10 safe outlets for kids to use in publishing online, but also in print. And this was difficult um, to find some things that were still taking print submissions. KidPub was one of the um, opportunities. This is um, the oldest writing site for kids, it says, and it takes about, or it costs. $12.95 per year, but what it offers that others don't are ways to edit, layout, cover design, marketing ideas, sales, gets really um, into specifics about that. The two that I wanted to focus on on this list, besides Figment and Teen Inc., are the magazines, Stone Soup Magazine, and then also Skipping Stones. These um, are both print opportunities, and they both publish bi-monthly during the school year. And so writers can submit their work using these general submission tips and guidelines, especially if they want to go to the print route, keeping a copy of the work, sending a self-addressed stamped envelope, um, those things in order to get their work back. Another interesting link that we found is by Charlie Hughes, who is the owner of Wynn Publications. And he gets very specific about all of the ways that you need to submit your work if you're doing it in print form. Um, fiction needs to look a certain way, poetry, um, one poem per page. So he's very specific about exactly what information needs to be where, um, such as word counts or line, line amounts um, when it comes to poetry. And so, again, he says that you do need to give a self-addressed stepped envelope um, to the publishers, no matter what, if you're going to submit it in print. Um, so there are some pretty interesting guidelines there that students can follow in order to do it the right way and not just do it randomly, which really annoys publishers. There are many ways that libraries can help teens create, edit, and publish their own works. The first part that libraries can help teenagers with is their writing. There are several writing groups that a librarian can create in order to encourage teens to write. The first is a general writing group that meets monthly where teens can bring in any kind of writing that they create, such as poems, stories, or manga, and they can present it to the group in order to get feedback if they wish. Another teen writing group that a library can create is a poetry workshop. Unlike the first writing group, this would be a special event. Workshops like this encourage teens to come to the library, create a love for poetry, and teach them about different forms of poetry. A presenter, who could be a local teacher or a poet, would talk about writing, and then the teenagers can create their own poems and present them if they wish. This format could also be used to create manga or comic book workshops or general writing workshops with authors. The next part that libraries can help teenagers with is the actual process of writing, including brainstorming and editing. One such program that the library could put together is a creative writing workshop. In her article, Right Here, Right Now, published in the Young Adult Library Services Journal, Heather Pritchard describes putting together such a program. In her workshops, the group would meet for 12 weeks, talk about writing, and then create their own works. Encouraging teens to write whatever they choose, talking through their problems with the librarian and other teens, and getting advice or editing would be invaluable to them. The last part of the writing process that libraries can help teens with is the publishing aspect. One program that a library can hold is an author's night. A local author could come to the library and talk to the teens about their experiences publishing their work. Heather Pritchard discussed using this as a part of her creative writing workshops. During the last session of her workshop, a local author came in and talked about the publishing process. The author then read the teen's works and gave them ideas and tips. Another program that a library could hold is Teen Publishing Night, where teens could learn how to publish works online or in print. Many teens want to use online and digital tools that have been previously discussed in this pager, paper, such as Figment or Teen Inc., or non-digital tools like Work Inc. or Stone Soup. A library program can show teens how to use these tools with their own works and allow them to use them in the future. A teen's library should be a place where they can go and receive help and advice on any topic that they would like to talk about, and creating these programs is a step in this direction. Creating a place where teens are welcome should be an important part of every library's mission.